Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Anthony Barbuto, and today I'll be sharing with you 10 tips that I think every American or tourist should know before they come to Italy, especially for the first time. Tip number one, don't wear flip-flops. Italians do not wear flip-flops unless they go to the beach. Too often I see Americans or other tourists wearing flip-flops at airports, in the city center, in churches, in museums, in restaurants, and that is a sure giveaway that you're not Italian. Not only are Italians going to laugh at you, but it's gonna expose you to street peddlers coming up to you and trying to sell things at inflated prices. If you wanna blend in and do as the Italians do, don't wear flip-flops. Don't be this guy. Tip number two, be fashionable. Italians are generally fashionable people and being fashionable does not mean that you have to spend a lot of money buying designer clothing. That's not necessary. You can go to Zara and buy fashionable clothing for relatively inexpensive prices. You don't wanna wear clothing that are three sizes too large. For sure, that's a giveaway that you are a tourist or American a mile away. Also going to expose you to laughs and to criticism and to street peddlers trying to take advantage of you. Spend a little bit more time thinking about your outfits. Get a nice pair of shoes, a nice belt, some accessories, maybe a scarf or a pocket square or a beautiful dress if you're a woman. Spend a little more time than usual focusing on your outfits and be fashionable when you come to Italy. Tip number three, don't drink cappuccino and eat a pizza at the same time. Italians do not do that. They think it's gross. Don't do it. I did a TikTok a couple years ago with a popular Italian TikToker and YouTuber where we demonstrated this whole concept. Don't be that guy. Don't eat pizza and drink cappuccino. Do it separately, at least a few hours in between. Tip number four. Don't trust that every restaurant in Italy or every bar serves quality food. Too often when I'm walking around in the center, I see Americans or other tourists eating at some corner bar and behaving as if the pizza that they eat or the sandwich that they're eating is the most delicious sandwich or pizza that they've ever tasted. You have to know which restaurants to go. Don't be this guy, but be this guy. Make sure you ask around and choose the restaurant or bar wisely. Tip number five, and this is quite funny and I always get amused when I see these things even today. Not all Italian men are gay. And I say that because when I came to Italy for the first time, I too often I saw men kissing each other on the cheek, calling each other beautiful, running their hands through another man's hair, squeezing the cheeks of another man, putting their arm around another man, walking down the street like that. And right away, my reaction was, you know, there's a lot of gay people here. I'm not criticizing gay people, but I just, I perceived it that there were just so many gay people in Italy. But the fact is, that's a very acceptable heterosexual behavior for Italian men to show another Italian man. So the following behavior is perfectly acceptable for two heterosexual men. Tip number six, don't trust all the street vendors and store operators when you're shopping in the center or anywhere else. Italians are prepared to try to sell things to tourists and Americans because tourism is so powerful here in Italy. It's perfectly acceptable, unless of course you're in a designer store. It's perfectly acceptable, especially when you're at these outside markets to negotiate. Make sure you negotiate the prices. They're prepared for it. And if in fact you don't negotiate, they're really gonna try to take advantage of you. So make sure you try to knock the price down. You just can't trust the vendors. They're gonna try to take advantage of you, especially if you're wearing flip-flops. Tip number seven, if you go to the beach, it's perfectly acceptable for an, a male to wear Speedos. Most Italian men wear Speedos. I know a lot of places in the United States, for example, men don't typically wear Speedos on the beach, but in Italy, everyone does it. 
and you should wear Speedos when you come to Italy. Here's a photo of me on the Jersey Shore wearing Speedos, of course, when I was a few pounds less than I am today. Yes, it was the Jersey Shore, and while it's not as acceptable on the Jersey Shore to wear Speedos, I always try to maintain my Italian style everywhere I go. Tip number eight, everything shuts down in August. If you wanna to travel to Italy in the summer months, just remember that a lot of stores are not gonna be available to you in August because the entire store will shut down. An example, I bought a pair of pants. I wanted to have them hemmed, but I couldn't find any tailor in August because they all shut down. In fact, they shut down by getting a piece of paper like this, writing a note saying, we're closed, see you in September, in their handwriting. This is how they do it. Surely if you go to a big city, they're prepared for tourists, so a lot of things will be open, but you'd be surprised how many stores do shut down, even in the big cities, and certainly in the small cities or the small towns. Therefore, if you're looking to get the best out of Italy in the summer months, go in June or July, or if you can, September. But if you're looking to vacation with Italians and go to the beaches, then August is a good month to come to Italy because all the Italians, they go and spend the whole month at the beach. That's where you can wear your flip-flops and your Speedos. Tip number nine, don't worry about getting medical insurance. You don't have to worry about receiving a medical bill that is astronomical as Americans have to worry about in the United States. As an example, when my daughter was under one, maybe six months old or so, she had a high fever. So we brought her to the hospital, it's a children's hospital right outside Florence. It's very well known to, to treat children. She was there for maybe four hours. She had all types of tests. And when we left, it was free, it was totally free. Another time my mother was here, my mother had to spend two nights in the emergency room. And two nights in the emergency room cost about 100 euros, which is maybe about you know $110 or something like that. It's not like the United States, it's a better system out here for medical expenses. And so you don't have to worry about securing, in my opinion, and I encourage you guys to do your own research, but when I travel to Italy, I don't typically worry about securing any type of medical insurance because they have a very good medical system out here, even for tourists compared to the United States and other parts of the world. Last but not least, guys, if you wanna have a real Italian experience in your next trip to Italy, you have to learn how to use a bidet. Why Americans don't use bidets and why the United States does not put bidets in, in every single bathroom is beyond me. I don't understand it. I think that bidets are very important to add to your cleaning regimen. I think that they are very sanitary and I have no idea why, why we, we don't use them. They're certainly a great idea. And I know that they're sold in places in the United States, but Americans just, just haven't caught on to them. I have not been in a bathroom in Italy that does not have a bidet. In fact, here's a funny TikTok video that I did with uh, an Italian friend a couple years ago showing how Italians are advanced in this area and uh, it shows him using the bidet. guys so there's my 10 tips i hope you learned something i hope you had some good laughs on some of the examples that i gave and uh, if you have any questions comment below i'll try to respond to all the different comments and if you enjoyed the video make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell for more videos about authentic italian culture talk to you later bye